television highlights of the news of yesteryear. Here are some of the most amazing on-the-spot pictures ever filmed. The USS Akron, near San Diego, California, May 11, 1932. The ship has been traveling four days from its Lakehurst, New Jersey hangar. At Camp Kearney, California, 200 feet above the Earth, the landing cable is down, and a ground crew prepares to lead the Akron to its mooring mast. Then, a hint of the disaster which is to follow. A strong wind catches the ship, and the ground crew, composed of Navy men, hangs desperately to the landing cable in an unsuccessful effort to moor the Navy ship. The dirigible escapes to the skies. Resisting all efforts of Commander Charles F. Rosendahl to maneuver it down, the huge ship rises with three sailors who held on to the cable too long, keeping a death lock on what is their only lifeline. ship's carpenter is forced to release his hole and crashes to the ground. Then Michael Hatton, second ground crew member, loses his grip and falls to his death. One man, Bud Coward, remains holding to the cable. High winds force the Akron up, and Coward fights against the fate that befell his comrades. And two hours later, he is hauled to safety, survivor of a tragic California visit of the USS Akron, Navy Queen of the Sky. It's 1927, and von Hindenburg, second president of the German Republic, visits Oldenburg, capital of the Grand Duchy. Hindenburg, Deutschland's general field marshal in the First World War, is touched as he greets the men who served under him. The German Republic was established in 1919, with Fritz Ebert assuming the Prussian presidency, following the abdication of Kaiser Wilhelm II. Hindenburg, later to be forced from office by Adolf Hitler, followed Ebert and established a sports program for German youth. Here he is shown laying the cornerstone for a great forum of sports in Oldenburg. Paul von Benigendorf und von Hindenburg. Rennes, France, and a cathedral is reclaimed. Shell torn following fierce fighting in World War I, the famous Rennes Cathedral is reconstructed in 1927. Prelates and official visitors attend the opening and marvel at the stained glass windows renowned for their beauty, which have been restored. France waits to worship for the first time in 13 years at its Rennes Cathedral. Monsignor Neveu leads the procession into the church and conducts mass in the presence of Cardinal Lucan of Rennes whose 60th year as a priest is being celebrated this day. Thousands unable to attend the services watch as Monsignor Neveu leaves and wait to receive blessing as the Rennes Cathedral rises again. Hollywood comes to the White House in 1927 as Snookums, infant idol of the movies, calls on President Coolidge. Senator Reed Smoot of Utah, sponsor of Snookums' visit, joins President Coolidge in a little child's play. It's really news when a political figure plays with a child after election. Mrs. Calvin Coolidge is hostess to a group of children in 1927, and the circus is the scene. You're having too good a time, Mrs. C. Washington, D.C. is clown town today. 1927, Sorancourt, France, and silent picture star Paula Negri becomes a princess. Miss Negri is married to Prince Dubani, 
and it's as happy a beginning as a Hollywood ending. Two years later, British Premier Ramsay MacDonald arrives here for the Solomon Conference. MacDonald, shown with daughter Ishbel, Grover Whalen, and English Ambassador Sir Esme Howard, gets a real New York reception as he rides up to City Hall for an official greeting from Mayor James J. Walker. After a series of talks with President Hoover and a special committee, the English Premier and his daughter leave Washington, D.C. with the sincere hope that groundwork for a permanent peace has been laid. It's 1927, and early America comes in for repairs as the Navy's old Ironsides enters dry dock for its first reconditioning since it was commissioned in 1833. Secretary of the Navy, Curtis Wilbur, officiates at the ceremony for Old Ironsides, Navy namesake of the fighting heroine of the War of 1812. Old Ironsides, first lady of the first line of defense. It's Anacostia, D.C., it's 1929, and it's the U.S. Navy pioneering in mass parachute jumping. Here are the first experiments in the technique that 15 years later was to take practical form in the airborne invasion of Nazi-held France. Military and naval officials watch as the plane takes to the air, later to scan the skies for the results of the test. The first of the jumpers leaves the ship, and then the sky becomes full of parachutists as the great possibilities of mass jumping become evident to the watchers. As the parachutes lower their human cargoes safely to earth, far-seeing air-minded men check the result of multiple parachute jumping, forerunner of a new invasion technique. Melville, Louisiana, 1927. Scene of ruin and desolation as a levee already partly shattered by rising water breaks again. The raging flood sweeps everything in its path, causing millions of dollars of property damage and inundating an entire city. Melville's railroad station is half submerged and automobiles, horses and humans trapped on the levee contribute to the despair of a city. Rescuers do yeoman work in Melville. But in New Iberia, Louisiana, the flood strikes the Great Southern Sugar Bowl. Thousands are fleeing as the waters of the Bayou Tesh burst through the restraining wall. Frantic effort is made to salvage belongings, but when the flood passes, very little is left except the determination of two Louisiana cities to build again. and hairdressers of America convene in Chicago to display their latest posture of creation. The most attractive hair model is to be crowned, and these girls get a head start. What to do with a hairdo or two in 29? Movie stars' coiffures inspired these two productions, and this is the Clara Bow Cut, influence of the it girl on the hairstyle. And this is the hit of the show. The co-ed hairdo with the tresses left long to allow for rows of ringlets. Oh well, girls will have curls. Chicago, 1929, and 18-year-old Helen Hicks tees off in the Women's Golf Derby. Miss Hicks attracts a large following up to the final green where she misses a putt, but cards a 320 for 72 holes to win. The winner's cup from Mrs. Lee Mida, former champion. Helen Hicks hops from the tee in the 20. 
St. Paul, Minnesota, and Jimmy Johnston, amateur golf champion, arrives home after winning the crown. That's his wife and child in the car with Jimmy. Jimmy is welcomed by Walter Hagen, among others. And then city officials take over as a hometown welcomes home a hero. Westbury, New York. It's polo time with Tommy Hitchcock, Jr., about to lead his Sands Point Four against Green Tree. Tommy Hitchcock on the left, international polo star. The Green Tree team, Whitney, Bozeki, Pedley, and Guest. The game in progress. Hitchcock, nationally rated 10 goal performer, led the United States team to victory over England in 1921, 24, 27, and 30, and over Argentina in 1928. And he does it again as his sand point four beats Green Tree, 14 goals to 10. The Belmont Futurity, richest race in turf history. There's a purse of $119,610 for the winner. And there they go. The horses are packed together at the start, but the field opens up as they near the first turn. The home stretch. The horse on the rail is out in front, but watch which one on the outside as his tremendous late stretch drive carries him across to victory. Yes. <laughs> 